If you've ever gotten a sweet potato from a big supermarket, an organic grocer, a farmer's market, or even grown them yourself, you might be shocked to find out that they are actually genetically modified. But what's even crazier is this genetic modification wasn't even done by humans. And it's not the sweet potatoes either, this isn't some sort of cop out where it's going to be evolution. So in this video we'll cover how this happened, why they're still safe to eat, clear up some misconceptions about GMO and even give you some tips on growing your own sweet potato. And of course answer what I assume is your number one question, where if humans didn't genetically modify sweet potatoes, was it aliens? It was probably aliens, wasn't it? God damn it, I knew it was them. Even when it was the bears, I knew it was aliens. Now let's dig in. Hello and welcome to No Effort November, an idea that I have totally stolen because what's lower effort than stealing from the very popular YouTube channel, Technology Connections, where I try and put as little effort into a whole bunch of videos all the way through November in order to cover a whole bunch more topics and put out a whole bunch more videos in order to really clear out a bunch of my backlog of cool video ideas and you may also notice that it's already about a week into November and this is the first video in the series where I'm trying to put out a lot more content and that's because I actually started the month with a pretty bad cold but today I've smashed enough Nurofen and caffeine to where I should actually be able to get through recording a video. And the good news is this is going to be the month where it's easier than ever to take requests so if there's any video topics you've been dying to finally see me cover let me know in the comments. But one of the good things about starting off the month sick is being stuck inside and not being able to record a video. I've actually got a good half dozen or so videos that I previously shot and then when I went to start editing them I then just gave up on because an edit takes about 20 hours and if I think that a video is not going to be that great, it's usually worth it actually just abandon it. So I've already gone back and edited a couple of those which will come out over the next couple days. But anyway, back to today's topic, sweet potatoes. Oh, before we talk about those though, I, I do need to point out that because I'm going to try and put in a lot less effort to the videos, there's less fancy editing, cool visuals, I won't be able to explain stuff as visually using what's called b-roll where i overlay lots of nice pretty shots so that you can understand what's happening a bit more intuitively so you're going to have to try and reset your tiktok brain and just focus in on this video with actual concentration instead of just getting distracted by fancy graphics all the time all right sweet potatoes oh hello suki i also normally wouldn't even try and film a video now in this sort of harsh midday sunlight but hey lower effort so in order to understand how sweet potatoes could possibly be naturally genetically modified we need to actually understand a little bit about what gmo is and probably clear up a few misconceptions because i think there's a lot of misinformation out there that really confuses gmo which is a fairly new thing with just selective breeding because one of the typical examples you see floating around the internet every now and again is you'll see what ancient aztec corn looked like where it was one stick with like four seeds on it and then you see current corn and people will say that this is what non-GMO corn looks like, but that's not GMO at all. The difference between those two is just breeding where we grow two plants of corn and then one of those has bigger ears with more corn kernels, which are seeds, bigger, sweeter seeds. And you go, oh, this one's good. I'll just replant more of these seeds and keep doing that again and again until we are growing plants that produce bigger, fruit and vegetables and corn with more desirable traits. That's not GMO, that is playing with plant genetics, which is what we have done with agriculture for basically all of human civilization, just trying to pick and reproduce more favorable traits in a given plant or veggie. But that is very, very different to GMO. And to understand that, we need to understand a little bit about genetics, and I'm going to completely oversimplify this. I'm sure there's probably some actual biology people that will give some probably better descriptions of this down in the comments, so go and check that out and leave it if you do know better explanations of some of this stuff. All right, let's talk about genetics and DNA, which, if you didn't know, DNA is actually just a type of acid, which is kind of really cool to think about. But, all right, I'm going to try and draw this. Right, so we have DNA, the band with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. Oh no, that's NWA. DNA is, I'll put it on screen, but you've probably seen this before, the double helix, where you then just have the, these lines across. And if we think about a tree, this is essentially just the instructions for how a tree might grow. So if we think about some sort of big hardwood tree in the Amazon, these instructions are just gonna tell it things like, you should grow in optimal conditions 
about an extra centimeter wider every year and then try and grow an extra foot taller every year. Again, very oversimplified. And each of these things are all of just the instructions that will tell you how to do things like that, like how to build the vascular structures to transport water from the roots up to the canopy, how to put out new leafy growth. It's all just the blueprints of how to do that stuff as you grow. So what GMO is, is when you look at these individual instructions and then you just try and change them. And the instructions that modern scientists when they're doing GMO are usually interested in is things like disease resistance, trying to change the instructions so that you already have an inbuilt resistance to certain funguses or something like that, which is something that's about to become really important for bananas as a fun fact, because if you don't know, bananas are actually all just clones of each other. My screen turned off, but hey, low effort. I don't even need to see myself <clears throat> because you don't get in that built-in genetic fortification that you get when you have two parents that can kind of protect each other as diseases and stuff pop up. They become really prone to just being completely decimated and wiped out by something that can effectively target that particular variety, which is starting to happen. There are starting to be funguses that are popping up that can really target the Cavendish bananas, the, the bananas that you probably see in supermarkets all the time. So scientists are really interested in creating GMO Cavendish bananas that are then resistant to these funguses that are starting to pop up that could, in theory, make all bananas go extinct. Which is the reason why, if you ever have artificial banana, what a lot of that artificial banana lollies and banana milk and stuff tastes like, that's actually what bananas used to taste like before that population kind of got wiped out by some diseases and then we bred into we had Cavendish bananas, which are why our now bananas taste different to banana flavoring stuff. But if you want to make this change, let's say you have a tree variety and you just want to make it grow taller, how do you actually change those genetic instructions? How do you take out this one line of instructions and then replace it with something that says, grow taller. The normal genetic instructions might cap out at two or three meters. You replace that with one that says grow to 10 meters and then it can, in theory, if you have the right conditions, grow taller. Well, how do you actually change this? Well, as it turns out, there are some living organisms that have already solved this problem for us that we then just borrowed. So as it turns out, there's this genus of bacteria called Agrobacterium, where in order to turn things like trees into better hosts for themselves, they can actually inject these change of genetic instructions into other living organisms like plants, like trees. So what agrobacterium usually is going to do is find something like a tree. It's a soil-borne bacteria, so it infects it through the root system. It manages to find this part of instructions which says how wide the tree wants to grow and then say, oh, instead of only growing it one centimeter wider a year or whatever, just grow as crazy tall as you can each year. Oh, not tall, as crazy wide as you can each year. See, normally I would retake that, but we're low effort, so I'm leaving it in. And then what you get is these trees that are just really like bulbous. They almost look like they have like elephant syndrome or whatever, where they just grow massive and big and like lumpy and stuff. And the bacteria loves that because then there's more tree for the bacteria to live. The bacteria gets to propagate itself. All because it has this natural ability to go, hey, change this one genetic instruction, let's do it over. And using that agrobacterium is actually one of the main vectors that scientists will use when creating GMO crops. They have just worked out how to replace their instruction of swell as large as you possibly can with instructions of their own. So that then they can plug in something like disease resistance. All right, now that we've covered that, we can get back to sweet potatoes. Oh, and every time I talk about seeds on the channel, one of the questions that I always get is how do you avoid buying GMO seeds in Australia? Because the stuff's not really that clearly labeled. And the good news is that there are no fruit or vegetable seeds or anything edible uh, that's GMO that's currently approved in Australia. Uh, the asterisk to that is that there are GMO bananas coming because that is an issue that you have to take care of. You can't let bananas go extinct. But yeah, if you're in Australia and you want to avoid GMO, you don't have to try. It's You are already doing it. Actually, well, I'm on it. I, I was going to put this later in the video, but something that people worry about a lot with GMO is that you are then going to eat it and then you're going to turn into like a mutant or something. But because an organism has already had its genetics changed when you eat it, that's then not going to somehow transfer into you and then change your DNA. It would be the same as eating, say, regular cauliflower and then purple cauliflower. When you eat the purple cauliflower, that's because that has different genetic instructions to the normal cauliflower. 
you don't suddenly turn purple when you eat the purple one. Same as if you would eat in a plant that originally had its instructions changed by the agrobacterium. The bacteria is no longer in there, it's just that that was used to change the instructions of one particular plant a while ago that they would have then bred from, which will make a lot more sense later in the video as well, once we talk about sweet potatoes. All right, which we'll now get to. All right, this next part of the story, I'm going to simplify a fair bit in order to create just a much more enjoyable narrative about what happened. So one day you have this scientist who wants to run some experiments on some sweet potatoes uh, because she wants to do some genetic modifying of some sweet potato varieties for whatever reason. And she pulls a sample of unmodified sweet potatoes out of their storage fridge or whatever, uh, puts them under the microscope, does some genetic testing on them and goes, huh, oh, that's strange. This uh, sweet potato has already been genetically modified. It has the traits of having genetic instructions replaced by agrobacterium. I must have just grabbed the wrong sample. Goes and grabs another sample from the fridge, runs it again, completely different sweet potato, gets the same things back again. This sweet potato has also been modified by agrobacterium. What's going on? So she calls her colleague halfway across the country and asks, Hey, uh, is your fridge running? My fridge? Yes, it is running. Why? Well, you better go catch it. <laughs> that is funny. And I have another question for you. Oh yeah, what is it? Can you please take some ungenetically modified sweet potatoes and test them for genetic modification, please? This sounds like a very tenuous joke and I'm really excited to see what the punchline is. No, no joke. Can you, can you actually please go grab some unmodified sweet potato and then test it for me, please? Again, very obscure, but I guess I'll go do that and then come back and find out what this joke is. The next day. Hey, we've got, I've got the test results in, but we must have had some sort of weird contamination at the lab because all of the sweet potatoes look like they've already been modified by agrobacterium. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. That's so strange. The same thing happened to us. Hang on a second, I've got an idea. By the way, here they actually confer with a whole bunch of other different laboratories and do a bunch of more experiments and then kind of confirm these findings. But for the sake of the story, we're skipping over that to this next conversation. Hello, museum speaking. The exact one of which I cannot be bothered Googling. Oh yeah, hello museum. I have a quick question for you. Uh, is your fridge running? Is this Dr. Cruz, the potato doctor again? My reputation precedes me. Anyway, hey, I've heard that you have some like preserved 2000 year old sweet potatoes that we might actually be able to borrow and cut up and test. You're not gonna eat them again, are you? That was one time, but this time I'll have lunch first. All right, come and borrow some. And now we have this couple thousand year old sample to test. And I need to note that earlier in the video, I said that the doctor doing this was a woman and upon fact checking, for the last little bit of that sketch, I realized that it's Jan and not Jan, and it's a Belgian male scientist, so low effort, but still factually correct enough. But anyway, we test these mummified multi-thousand year old sweet potato samples and find that we actually also have this exact same evidence of the sweet potatoes having been genetically modified by agrobacterium and genetic modification is only a couple decades old. It's like 60 years old or so. So obviously it wouldn't have actually been humans purposely doing that back then. It was actually just a natural occurring process of this agrobacterium trying to find a host, changing those genetic instructions and then, and then the next part of the theory goes is that around 4,000 years ago, you would have had some farmers or gardeners growing some sweet potatoes. And up until this point, they all probably look about this size, maybe even a little bit smaller, where you do have some nice thick-ish root tubers that uh, make a delicious vegetable that you can grow pretty reliably and eat. But then one day, some gardener or farmer comes along and then what they start digging out of the ground is sweet potatoes that look a bit more like these absolute chonkers, these fatty, fatty boombas. And then you go, oh my God, I've magically found the exact secret to growing perfect, gigantic, calorific sweet potatoes. I'm going to propagate these and then just keep growing these. And then what you end up with is that these spread all the way throughout Europe and Asia and everywhere. And these just become what sweet potatoes are because Again, they have a really desirable trait that we want to keep selectively propagating and breeding them for. And then now here we are with fully domesticated sweet potatoes, that genetic modification is completely stabilized. It occurred completely naturally. And if you've ever eaten a sweet potato, you've also eaten some GMO food. 
which this might sound like it's some sort of weird GMO propaganda, but it's not. I'm, I'm neither really pro nor anti GMO. I think it's completely fine and safe to eat on an individual basis. The only real concerns for it are some issues around corporations being able to copyright seed genetics, which is already a bit of an issue over in the US. There are also potentially some other impacts around biodiversity, being able to outcompete other crops. But the sort of headline, I think, grounded take on GMO is nothing to be afraid of on the individual level. Some concerns for larger issues that require a lot more thought and have a lot more wide reaching implications than just whether or not something will mutate you because it won't. And if you've never grown sweet potato before, it's something I highly recommend that you give a go. You can literally just start from a potato that you grow from the supermarket. You put this in water for a couple of weeks, you'll start to get some shoots out of it. Those shoots are what's called slips. <laughs> Forgot for a second called slips. Those are essentially a vine that you then plant. After a while, you'll end up with an entire bed that's just covered in these vines. Once they start to die back, you'll dig them up and you'll have sweet potatoes. And normally that 30 second explanation in a higher effort video, I would spend months actually growing and showing you footage of, but I'll leave that for another month. If you found the facts in this video fascinating, I've got another video that's actually really similar to it, but it's entirely about MSG instead of being about GMO, which is another weird public perception thing where a lot of people still think that it's unsafe, but you've actually probably just been eating it your whole life anyway and not knowing it. Uh, I'll put that here. I'll say thank you to the Patreons. Basically, none of these videos during this month will be sponsored so that I can actually get them out really quickly. So uh, if you want to support the channel, you can check out the Patreon. Leave me a super thanks. Or just honestly, the best way to support the channel is make sure that you're subscribed click the like button, maybe share it with a friend or just go and watch some other videos. The next videos that'll be coming out in the next couple of days are actually really old videos that I then have just re-edited in the last couple of days. They won't have anything about No Effort November, but still make sure to watch them. And if you have any requests, let me know. The original goal for this month was to try and do 20 videos in the month. Now that I'm starting at like a week in, that's probably cut down to maybe 15 or so. And also make sure you check out my second channel, Ryan Bolt, because one or two of these videos will be published over there. However, now that YouTube makes collaborations really easy, you should be able to see it anyway, even if you're not subscribed to that channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you uh, probably tomorrow.